In my last video, I went over the basics of core data to perform basic CRUD operations in a brand new iOS app. In this video, I'm gonna build on top of that by performing the basic CRUD operations in an existing app to see how we can create new objects and present them in a user interface. I've created another budgeting app that works like this. So there's a spot at the top of the screen to create a new budget given a title and an amount. So I can create a budget, let's call it uh, food, um, and the amount is gonna be, I don't know, maybe uh, uh, 500. So I have a food budget for the month, it's gonna be $500. And when I click this save button, I want it to create a brand new instance of a budget, a brand new bu budget object that will get saved to core data. And then I want it to show all of my budgets in this table view here. So right now it just clears the text fields and nothing happens, but I want this to get saved. And then later on, if I tap on a budget, I wanna go to a new screen where I can create an expense. So I could say I spent $3 on milk and uh, $5 on cereal. And then that will appear on a different screen. And then I could actually calculate my remaining budget by subtracting all of my expenses from my budget. So this application doesn't have core data in it yet so I need to add core data to this application create my entities save those entities and just get everything hooked up and working so when an application doesn't have core data already enabled like we didn't uh, check that checkbox when I created the application uh, to add core data is really easy if we just go to add a new file and then scroll down to core data we'll see that I can create a data model here so I'm going to create a new data model I'm going to call this budget data because that's the name of my application uh, so I'm gonna create that and now we get this XC data model. I'm just gonna drag this down here. Um, and this is uh, the same as what we had in our other application when we enabled core data by default. So this is where I can set up all of my entities and all my attributes on my entities. Uh, so I'm just gonna jump in, I'm gonna create a new entity and I'm gonna call this uh, budget. And my budget is only gonna have a few attributes. Uh, so there's gonna be a, a total amount. So I'm just gonna call that amount. And then from the options here, uh, I could maybe choose float or double, but since it's a monetary value, I'm gonna go with decimal because decimal is a much more accurate representation of a base 10 decimal number. Uh, so that will actually translate to an NS decimal number in our code. So keep that in mind because it won't be a Swift decimal, it will be an Objective-C NS decimal. And it's probably a good time to mention that core data is very heavily Objective-C. So all the things that are going on under the hood are tightly coupled to Objective-C and you will see this uh, seep through into our Swift code a little bit, just like with this. When we actually uh, go to use this budget object, we'll be using an NS decimal number. So just keep that in mind. Uh, so I want an amount uh, and I want a title uh, and the title is just gonna be a string and neither of these should be optional. So I'm just gonna remove optional there and the amount is not gonna be optional and I guess the default value could be zero, why not? So with that set up, I'm gonna to go to my budget view controller and this is a basic view controller. There's a little bit of code to set up a table view um, and open up a new view controller when a cell is tapped. Um, but right here at the top, this is the interesting part. So when we tap that save button, the data is taken from the text fields, and then we need to use that data to create a new budget. So right here, I need to create that new budget object, but before I can create a new object in core data, I need that NS managed object context. And I don't just get that code for free here because I didn't have that checkbox checked. So I'm gonna go back to my application from the last video and I'm just gonna steal all of this code. So I'm gonna, uh, in the app delegate, I'm just gonna take that default code that was in the application, and I'm gonna come back to my budget application, and I'm gonna paste it in here, but I don't wanna put it in the app delegate. I, I'm not a huge fan of Apple actually defaulting to that being the place where they put their core data code. I think the app delegate is responsible for other things. It shouldn't be responsible for core data as well. So what I'm gonna do is create a brand new file um, and I'm just gonna call this maybe my data manager. And this is gonna be a class that contains the code to set up the persistent container uh, and you know save the current context. I'm actually just gonna call this save rather than save context. And this is going to be a singleton. So I'll just say uh, let shared equal data manager. Uh, and then any class within my application now can just access this data manager and then start persisting things to core data or querying things from core data. Uh, and it doesn't know what an NS persistent container is because we need to import core data. 
So my goal here by doing it this way is that I'm only going to import core data into this file. I don't want any other part of my application to be that tightly coupled to core data. So I'm going to leave all of the, the messy core data details in this file and my other files can just access things from this class. So I now need to create that new budget object and I'm actually going to put all of the code to do that in this file still. Uh, so I'm going to create a function, I'm going to call it budget and a budget needs to be created with a uh, title which is going to be a string and an amount which is an NS decimal number. So when we create a new budget we need to pass in the context which is going to be this persistent containers view context. Uh, then I'm going to set the title to be the title that's passed in uh, and the amount to be the amount that's passed in. Uh, and then I'll actually return that budget object back so that the other file can use it. So uh, let's return budget. So this is the basic setup, just going to create a new budget from the context, set up its properties, and then I'm going to turn it out. So I'm not going to save it here, I'm still going to let the other classes manage that, uh, but this will just create it for me. So now in my budget view controller, to create that new budget, I can say, uh, let's see, data manager, uh, shared, oh right, I didn't do that as a static variable, so... Now, in my budget view controller, shared uh, budget will pass in the title, so budget title, and that's just coming in from the text field, and the budget amount, which is already uh, an NS decimal number created from that budget amount text. So this is just the data coming in from the text field and then using that to create a new budget object. Uh, so I can do this from my view controller, and then I could even just say immediately, um, as soon as I create a budget, I want it to be saved. So I'll tell my data manager to now save that context. And if we look back in here, the save method is just uh, running that context.save method on the context. So this is really similar to how we did things in the last application, create a new object and save it. Uh, but another thing I want is to have an array of budgets uh, in my view controller so that I can see them in that table view. So every time I create a new budget, I'm just going to push that into my budgets array. So I have this, this array of budgets here that's empty. Uh, so I'll just say budgets.push uh, budget. Um, and then I'll say uh, table view. Uh, maybe I'll just reload the data. And then that's good. So uh, it's not push, it's uh, append. Wrong language. OK, so that should be enough. Uh, we're not querying any data. But that should be enough to save a budget and then present it in the table view. Actually, I need to. Uh, need to present it in that cell, so we'll get the current budget. So that's just taking the details from the current budget and displaying it in a table view cell. So this has nothing to do with core data, this is just taking uh, data from an array of objects. The only real core data part here is this part where we're using the context to create the budget and then we're using the context to save the budget. Um, but everything else is just treating it like it's a normal Swift object. So let's create a title, let's call this food. Let's say the amount is 500. And then I'm going to tap save, and this should save its core data and present it in the table view. And instead, my application crashed because I didn't change the name of the data model. So uh, back in my data manager, when I created the NS persistent container, I need to pass in the name of the XE data model. That's the file where I'm actually setting up all of the entities. That's this file here. Uh, but instead, I copied and pasted it from another application, so it was the wrong name. So this needs to be budget data, not data demo, budget data. So now, rerunning the app. So notice before that point, everything works. But as soon as I tried to use core data, my application crashed. So let's create a food budget, 500, and save and it's still crashing. And it might be because I messed up that first time. So what I'm gonna do is actually delete this application from the simulator and then rerun the application and that might fix this issue. So one more time, if I go to create the food budget and hit save, there we go. It's now appearing in the table view. Now it's not loading any data from core data but it is allowing me to create a new budget and present it in the table view. So there's just one more thing here because right now uh, saving new budget seems to be working okay, it's not throwing any errors. 
when this view controller first loads, when this first appears, if I rerun the application right now, it's going to be completely empty. There's going to be no budgets there, even though core data is persisting that budget to the database. So I need to, as soon as this view controller loads, get all of the budgets and present them in that table view. So in my data manager, again, I'm going to create another method, and this is going to create a fetch request for all the budgets, and then my view controller can just get all the budgets and display them in the table view. <laughs> So this is setting up that new NS fetch request, executing the fetch request, and then returning the results from that fetch request. And we're just going to print out if there's any errors. And then in the view controller right here, I just need to, from the data manager, grab all of those budgets. There they are. And I'm going to assign that to be the value of the budgets array. And then I need to tell the table view to reload the data. So now when I run the app, we should get all of the budgets, put them in that array, and then reload the table view. So we should now see a food budget as soon as we open the view controller, and that's perfect. There is the food budget. And then I could create even more budgets. So I could have maybe like a, a transit budget, maybe that's like 100 a month, and save that, and that appears in that array. And then if I go and restart the application, completely leave and come back, all of that data is there and I can present it in that table view just like that. So that's it for this video. This has been an example of how to create new objects and query those objects to present them in a table view in an iOS application. This is enough information to get started with core data in your applications, but there's definitely more you'll need to know in order to use core data effectively in your iOS apps. In my next few videos, I'll be covering things like how to create more complex fetch requests and how to model relationships between different objects in your core data model. So play around with some of the code examples here and then stay tuned for those videos. Thank you.